Hi everyone, and in this design video we'll be looking at one of the most challenging parts of the build, the memory. In this video, we're going to look at the memory of our 8-bit computer, which will take the place of RAM in a real machine, random access memory. Memory is one of the most complex components, partly because it has a lot of detailed features and partly because it's big, and thus there's a lot of opportunities for mistakes. First, let's look at how RAM fits into our system at the module level. In module sim, there is an NRAM module. This provides a large amount of 8-bit memory, far more than we can fit in Minecraft. But we'll build about 64 bytes of memory, which should be sufficient. The memory in module sim has data inputs at the bottom, a write enable signal on the bottom right, address inputs on the upper right side, and data outputs on the top. We will need all the same signals for our memory. The memory outputs are directed to two places. Firstly, some multiplexers, which will select between the output of the arithmetic unit and the output from the memory. And secondly, to some registers, which will be used to store temporary copies of each instruction as it is read from memory. The address inputs are also multiplexed to allow us to read either from the address in the program counter register or from an address coming from the arithmetic unit. So that's the high-level view of our memory. We can supply an address, that selects a byte in the memory at that index, and then either overwrites it with the inputs or reads its value to the outputs. To see how we can build this as a real circuit, let's first think about an individual bit, or a memory cell, as I shall sometimes call it. We've already seen how to store individual bits using data flip-flops. We'll use the same design here, except with some extra controls. Instead of a single enable signal, we'll split it into a read enable and a write enable. At the byte level, this will allow us to more compactly select which bytes to read from the memory. A byte in memory, which I shall also call a memory block, comprises eight memory cells. It's much the same as a register, but with the separated read enable and write enable signals. However, we will also add a buffer to the output. Minecraft wires actually simulate something a bit unusual in electronics. We would describe them as being weakly pulled down. This is because when no power is attached to Minecraft redstone wires, they are off, i.e. zero. In real life, unattached wires have an unknown voltage, which could be any value, 0 volts, 0.5 volts, 3.4 volts, or even 100 volts, anything. But by connecting the wires to resistors, which are connected to 0 volts, we can pull the wires down. If the wires are connected to 5 volts, i.e. a 1, then the wires will have 5 volts and the resistor can be safely ignored for our purposes. If, however, nothing is attached to the wire, then the wire is pulled down to 0 volts. To match Minecraft's behavior, we can build an NMOS circuit as shown. Note that this is an NMOS OR gate implementation. It's not a perfect replica of Minecraft Redstone, but it's close enough for our design. Why do we need the output buffer then? Well, each memory block has an input coming from the memory block before it. That chained input is awed with the output of this memory block to produce a final result. If we ensure that only one memory block has its read enable set at a time, then we can read a single memory block but chain everything together. This makes for a more compact circuit than if we had to multiplex all the outputs of the memory blocks. Let's create a grid of memory blocks. We'll have signals which allow us to set which column and row we want to read from.
If we power a particular row and column, where they intersect is the block we will read from or write to. Here I'm using OR gates because in Minecraft an OR gate is just the intersection of two wires. Very easy and faster than an OR gate. In real electronics, we'd stick to using entirely NOR as much as possible. Because we are using OR gates, I'm actually using another electronics trick. The read and write enable signals are inverted from what's usual. In other words, enabled is actually unpowered or off, and disabled is actually powered or on. So we're using off to mean true and on to mean false. This is called negative logic and is sometimes useful, as it is here, for optimizing circuits. Now we need to work out which row and column to enable for a given address. This means having one wire for each row or column and choosing which to power based on the address. This is achieved using a component called a decoder. Let's see how one works. A decoder is actually a special case of a demultiplexer. As the name suggests, a demultiplexer does the opposite of a multiplexer. A 1 to 4 demultiplexer takes a single input and outputs it over one of the four possible outputs. We can see how multiplexers and demultiplexers are opposites if we connect them together in module sim. We can build a decoder by always inputting a 1 to the data input of a demultiplexer and using the address to select which output. This produces what we call a one-hot encoding. The address is a numeric encoding, whereas the output of the decoder is a one-hot encoding. In a one-hot encoding, only one of the wires is on at a time, and the index of the wire tells you which address it is. This will also be useful later when we look at instruction decoding. We can decode our memory address into eight signals for our columns and four signals for our rows. In Minecraft, we may also add a third decoder to select multiple layers of RAM, giving us 3D RAM. So here's the decoder we'll be using in Minecraft. Again, this Minecraft decoder is using negative logic. So on means false and off means true.
That's our memory. Wow, what a big circuit. This is going to be a challenge to fit in the simulation constraints of Minecraft. Join me tonight for the live stream as we try to figure it out. I'll also be answering any questions you have in the live comments. 